Nuclear energy at a turning point. Clear power has uh, sort of gotten back into the conversation. We're in the midst of a nuclear renaissance right now. Coal pollution kills thousands every year. Yet one nuclear accident decades ago still haunts our imagination. Explosions, evacuations, radiation. These images turned nuclear into the world's energy villain. But here's the twist. The truth tells a very different story. A single fuel pellet, no bigger than your fingertip, holds the energy of a ton of coal. Dense, reliable, low carbon safer than most people think. So why are we still burning fossil fuels in 2025 instead of embracing this power? Today, we uncover nuclear's real strengths, the fears that stalled it, and the choices that could shape our future. Core Strengths Nuclear power's greatest strength is its density. A single fuel pellet no larger than the tip of your finger, holds as much energy as an entire ton of coal. That means enormous power from a tiny footprint, a reality no other energy source can match. Unlike wind or solar, which sprawl across vast landscapes, nuclear delivers steady output from a relatively small site. Then there's reliability. Reactors don't depend on sunshine or breezes, they run day and night, in heat waves and blizzards, providing a backbone of stability to the grid. While renewables ebb and flow, nuclear plants maintain the constant hum modern societies demand. The climate impact is equally powerful. Nuclear produces electricity at scale without greenhouse gases. France demonstrates this best. After embracing nuclear power in the 1970s, its emissions plummeted while the economy grew. Few nations can claim such a balance of prosperity and low carbon intensity. Safety, too, deserves attention. Popular imagination paints nuclear as dangerous, yet the record tells a different story. Compared to coal, oil, or even hydropower, nuclear has caused far fewer deaths per unit of energy produced. Modern designs add layers of passive safety, capable of shutting down automatically without human intervention. And finally, there's longevity. Reactors can run for decades, often 40 years or more, with upgrades extending their lifespans further. That stability turns them into generational assets, not temporary fixes. In short, nuclear power combines density reliability, climate benefit, safety, and endurance in a way no rival can truly equal. Why we stalled. The year was 1979. A partial meltdown at Three Mile Island sent shockwaves across America. Then, in 1986, Chernobyl exploded across the global imagination. An accident so catastrophic it turned nuclear fear into policy. And finally, in 2011, Fukushima, after a tsunami, reignited every anxiety people thought they had buried. Each disaster reshaped how governments regulate nuclear power. New rules piled on top of old ones. Reviews stretched into years, then decades. Costs spiraled out of control. Investors fled. Today, in many Western countries, it can take more than a decade just to get approval for a new plant before a single shovel hits the ground. When construction finally begins, the design is outdated. Financing costs balloon, budgets collapse, and projects are quietly abandoned. One of the biggest culprits is the linear no-threshold model of radiation exposure, the idea that even the smallest dose of radiation is dangerous. Some scientists argue this precaution is overblown, but regulators cling to it. The result? Every step is treated as if it might unleash another Chernobyl. But here's the irony. By slowing down new builds, regulations keep old, less safe reactors running for longer. Instead of pushing forward into safer designs, we're stuck maintaining reactors built decades ago. 
Meanwhile, countries that streamlined their rules, like South Korea, built fleets of reactors quickly and safely. Standardized designs, predictable schedules, efficient oversight. The difference is night and day. So maybe the real question isn't whether nuclear is safe, but whether our approach to regulating it makes sense at all. Next-Gen Designs If the big reactors of the past are too slow and too expensive, what about something smaller? Enter Small Modular Reactors, or SMRS. These are designed to be built in factories, shipped to sites, and plugged into the grid like oversized batteries. Instead of one giant billion-dollar gamble, you build them piece by piece, scaling as needed. SMRS also incorporate passive safety features. That means if something goes wrong, the reactor shuts itself down. No human intervention required, no external power needed. It cools naturally, safer by design. Beyond SMRS, engineers are experimenting with molten salt, liquid metal, and high-temperature gas reactors. These can run hotter, more efficiently, and with less waste. Some even propose fuel cycles that reduce the lifespan of nuclear waste from thousands of years to just a few hundred. And then there are micro-reactors, tiny portable units that could power remote towns, military bases, or data centers. Imagine rolling a reactor off a truck, plugging it in, and lighting up an entire village. When you're done, pack it and move it. Of course, the holy grail remains fusion, the same reaction that powers the sun. No chain reaction, no meltdown risk, no long-lived waste. But fusion is still decades away. These technologies exist. Prototypes are being tested right now. But here's the catch. Without regulatory reform and investor confidence, they'll never leave the lab. Nations like China and India are already advancing. The West? Still stuck debating. So the future is here. But whether we use it is another story. National Lessons Look across the globe, and a pattern emerges. France, beginning in the 1970s, committed to a standardized fleet of reactors. The result? Decades later, the majority of its electricity still comes from nuclear, and its emissions remain among the lowest in Europe. South Korea adopted the same principle. By focusing on just a few designs, it built reactors faster, cut costs, and maintained one of the strongest safety records in the world. China has moved even more aggressively. By building reactors in series, it slashed construction times while simultaneously investing in renewables. India, though slower, is testing advanced models that could redefine the next generation. In each of these cases, nuclear power is treated not as a relic or burden, but as an engine of opportunity. Contrast that with Germany. After Fukushima, it shut down its nuclear fleet, only to replace it with coal and fossil fuel imports, erasing years of climate progress. The United States and the United Kingdom sit in another camp where endless red tape, shifting regulations, and ballooning budgets stall nearly every project before it leaves the drawing board. The lesson is striking. When governments plan consistently, stick to clear rules, and earn public trust, nuclear power thrives. When they hesitate or politicize the process, reactors never materialize. At this point, the question is no longer about technology. It's about choices. Bold, unpopular, necessary choices. And those who make them will lead the energy future, while the rest watch it slip away. Power of fear. Why does nuclear inspire such fear? Accidents are rare, far rarer than disasters caused by coal, oil, or even hydroelectric dams. Yet when they happen, the images are unforgettable. Explosions, evacuations, radiation. They have dominated headlines for decades. Coal pollution quietly kills thousands every year through lung disease. 
gas pipelines explode, wiping out neighborhoods. Dams collapse, flooding towns. But these tragedies fade into the background. Nuclear accidents? They burn into memory. Psychologists call it dread risk, when people fear rare, dramatic events, far more than common, deadly ones. And dread drives policy. Regulators act as if one more accident would be the end of civilization. Investors walk away. Public opinion hardens. The truth is more complicated. Nuclear has risks, yes. But compared to the ongoing, invisible destruction of fossil fuels, those risks are tiny. Still, fear is powerful. And fear has shaped the entire trajectory of nuclear power. Future Path The future is ours to choose. Nuclear power is not perfect. It demands caution, oversight, and responsibility. But the way we regulate it today has turned caution into paralysis. If we want to decarbonize fast enough to matter, we need nuclear alongside renewables, not buried under fear. Smarter rules, clear timelines, honest comparisons, and public communication that treats people like adults. Otherwise, we'll keep burning fossil fuels while safer reactors sit locked in blueprints. The choice is simple. Fear the atom, or use it to buy ourselves time. Which side of history do we want to stand on? Nuclear power isn't just an energy option. It's a decision about what kind of future we're willing to fight for. Will we cling to fear or harness the atom with wisdom and responsibility? The truth is clear. Every year of hesitation locks us deeper into a fossil-fueled trap we can't escape. But every bold step forward opens the door to cleaner skies stronger economies, and a planet that can breathe again. If this story challenges how you see nuclear power, don't let it fade here. Share it. Debate it. Ask the hard questions. And most importantly, demand better choices from those in power. Because the future doesn't wait. And neither should we.